Now, I may not love Monica, but that mama hers is the real problem. Honestly. I know that may be a controversial take, but as someone who has a bit of a toxic mother, and I've done my best to cope with that, if you will, seeing the way her mom immediately jumped on the side of strangers, I felt for little Monica, as Monica says herself in her confessional. Like, why would my mom need to step in and embarrass me like this? You know, I can handle myself. And even if I don't handle myself, all you're doing is drawing attention to you, to me. It's making me uncomfortable. She remi- Her mom, LD, she reminds me of Ramona. I know that sounds weird, but when her mom sits with the guys and after, after Monica's stormed off and sitting by herself, she sits with the guys. She's like, let's talk sports. Let's talk sports. Did you guys play college ball? I was like, oh my God, it's like Ramona hitting on a guy in a bar. And then when LD goes to comfort Monica, it felt like Ramona vibes. Like when she was like, okay, Bethany, Mm, very fake. So don't get me wrong. I got plenty to say about Monica, and I will. But before that, hey, welcome to She Speaks Bravo. If you are new here, I love Bravo TV. I love all TV. I release at least four episodes a week. So subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Hit whatever notification bell you are either listening to or watching this podcast on. And that's it for my pitch. Oh yeah, don't forget if you're watching on YouTube to like this video and comment below. And actually, another little shout out to my YouTube people. Thank you guys so much for your unwavering support. Some of you are just the realest of the reals. And actually, another shout out to my Patreon people. Love you, queens, so much. Thank you for all of the love and support. And hey, if you are listening to this and you haven't already given me a rating and a review on the platform that you enjoy podcasts, please do. It really helps the show. It's a free way to support the show, algorithms and things like ratings and reviews. So it would really help me out if you could just do that if you haven't already. And for those of you who have, thank you. Unless you wrote a bad review. And in which case, I got nothing for you. All right, on that note, let's roll the intro and let's get into this episode. Here at She Speaks Bravo, we believe that Bravo TV is a great form of self-care and therapy. I mean, look at me. I've been using it for over a decade and I'm a complete mess. What is this, honey? I love that. I'm Emily. Every week I recap the latest episodes of your favorite Bravo shows, from Housewives to Vanderpump Rules. We need to get more cosmopolitan. So if you're not already subscribed, get subscribed and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. That bunny invitation bit would have... Heather's, the guy in the back seat. I mean, I don't know how she recovered so quickly. I mean, I'm assuming she knew it was safe, but the only camera on her looked like the car camera... That That is something nightmares are made of, okay? <laughs> that is terrifying. Those kind of costumes freak me out. I don't, like, I don't know if not ever maybe not everyone has that kind of fear, but they freak me out. They feel, they feel sinister. So if that was in my back seat, lifelong trauma, <laughs> lifelong trauma, okay? Lifelong paranoia. I already get in my car like a crazy person. I don't actually, I'm not going to call that a crazy thing to do. We should all be hyper aware of when we walk to our cars. I was leaving my friend's house and she lives in an apartment complex that's pretty big. And I parked in the guest spot, which is like an underground garage. And you better believe I was like, if anyone is following me to my car, I am fucking well aware that you are here. Okay. And I have my keys. Oh, also guys, pro tip. If anyone has mace, that can be a little tricky. Pepper spray on your keychain kind of thing because it gets in your eyes too. Birdie is a great company. This is such a tangent, but Birdie is a great company. They make, oh, I don't have my keys on me. 
it's like you pull you pull the thing out of the holder it's in and it shines a bright light like it flashes a bright light and it makes a really loud noise so it disarms the person and gives you a chance to whatever you got to do punch run whatever you need to do you know because if you are a woman in this world you know what or a man anyone can be robbed or mugged but especially for women because we look like we are easy to take on but you know what we're ready so yeah if i had to if i got in my back seat and a fucking bunny a man in a bunny costume was in there? Oh, I would be suing <laughs> suing Angie for the trauma, okay? That was a little tangent. Be safe out there. Whitney and Justin are continuing their marital problems storyline type of deal. The story about the bacon. I'm just going to pretend that this is real. I'm just going to live in a place where this is a real scene, not staged. Um, the story though of Justin, he's like, man, I'm just, I'm already overwhelmed with juggling everything. She's like, you're not because this is so fucking true. Women will do the laundry, uh, take the kids to school, make lunches, clean up all of it every single day. They don't even expect, it's just to be expected of them, but they don't really expect a whole lot of wow, good for you in return. But the man will like take out the trash and it's like, I did the trash. Okay. Wasn't that amazing? And you're like, okay, I've done 20 things while you were getting the trash and taking it down to the bin. That's what women, we, we multitask like nobody's business. So the fact that she's getting the kids ready, making them making the bacon and then the dog pees. So she's got to fix that. And there's Justin like, man, what a morning, huh? Classic, very classic. So if she's going for, cl I don't know. I didn't get the feeling that this was as staged as the first one. That's also what's hard about Whitney because she talks like such a robot that it feels like she's reading from a script. I don't know if she is though, but it feels like that, you know? So then she says, I don't want to always be them. We had like a little petty fight. And I mean, I don't want to have to be the one to bring it up all the time. And he's like, well, I don't want to have to be the one always initiating sex. You know, I think that we're all in agreement. We assume that they've been having sex like bunny rabbits because that's kind of the vibe. But um, Whitney's not wrong. This is just the classic husband and wife shit. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. It's like some easy tweak in here and there. Like he's got to communicate a little bit better and be a little bit more aware and she'll put out. But men really are just about the sex, honestly. It's that simple. Lisa and Angie go to this like candle making place. I feel like I want to do this. I've seen, it's been a housewife activity a few times and I would like to try that. I don't know what I would put, but I love a scented candle. Jack's friend is working there. And was this chick mic'd up? Because I'm dying that production was like, oh, you know, Jack, would you be willing to get mic'd up and say some shit to Lisa? Because that'd be great. Because she walks over just to be like, hey. And I, I think Lisa had a feeling she was there. She probably saw the chick getting mic'd up. And she's like, did you know about Jack's mission before me? And she goes, mm -hmm, I did. <laughs> And I was like, and cut, that's her scene. She's like, okay, bye. See you later. <laughs> so after Jack's little friendo walks away, Monica tells Lisa that she's, I'm sorry, Angie. I've done this a couple times. Angie tells Lisa that she invited Monica to her Greek Easter party. And Lisa's like, okay. She was really doubling down on that rumor. Now, hold on. I don't remember if this was on Watch What Happens Live or if this is in a confessional. We'll find out soon because it'll be in my notes. I was really going under the assumption that Meredith told Monica the rumors, but she, but, but Monica was also like, and I also heard it before that. But like, I really was like, there's Meredith saying this because that's what Monica was saying. Meredith said this rumor. But now Monica's like, it's just been a rumor. It's just been the gossip. That's very different. That's very different, okay? Because 
you're now saying you didn't hear it from Meredith and then Meredith either she tweeted during watch what happens live and they or wrote in or something and the tweet was that Meredith's like I never repeated that rumor and Andy goes well do you know what the other rumor is that she was allu- the rumors that she was alluding to the rumors and nastiness and Monica says of course I do but I'm gonna let Meredith take that because she has receipts so great now I've got more things to wonder about but uh I just, I, 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 I will watch it again. I will watch the episode where Monica says, I heard it from Meredith again, because I swear she says, Meredith told me, Meredith, this is what Meredith is saying. But it's possible that I was listening to just what Whitney said, because Whitney's like, Meredith always does this. She always does, you know what I mean? So I don't, but I really was under that assumption. But Lisa's like, no, no, we're not. I think Lisa's not incorrect, though. Like, I did think that Whitney was like, wait, what rumors? And then it was like, okay, fine, I'll say it on camera. That's why Monica says it. And so I was kind of like, that's even more Whitney's fault. But finding out that it wasn't even a rumor that Meredith said to her, and she was like, oh, we're going to talk about the gay rumor then that I've been hearing for years. Yeah, okay, that is worth being mad at her over. Because, again, she's saying, I heard it from Meredith, and I told you, Angie, this is what was said. But then you didn't, I'm sorry, I'm I'm spiraling, I'm spinning. I don't know, this, this happens on Salt Lake City a lot. I just don't know who's telling the truth, because I don't think anyone ever is. So, I'm with Lisa that Monica's not so innocent. It's not just Meredith, which is who Mon- uh, Angie got mad at. I don't know. I don't know. I am very confused by that. Well, I think it happens in this episode. I believe it's in a confessional that she says that. But I don't love that at all because now I don't know who to be mad at. We'll get to the mid-season trailer too, by the way. That is a different story. It seems like Meredith is embracing her villain era and I'm obsessed, but we'll get to that at the end. But anyway, back to Lisa telling Ange, I would not trust Monica, okay? Um, and Lisa goes, we have mutual friends. I've never heard that rumor. Now, I don't know, like, again, Heather's heard it. You live in Utah. Is the, Are you lying too, Lisa? Why does this always happen? If Lisa is lying, she's being a real one because she is protecting her friend and, and her friend's husband. Because I believe her. I really do. But I also don't know if sometimes when rumors get around, you don't tell certain people, like certain rumors don't hit certain people like no one would come to me with the rumor about one of my good friends because I'd be like go fuck yourself it's on you know what I mean so this is so dumb that we're sitting here debating the rumors again right it's always rumor the rumors uh Lisa says that Monica is not the type of person she would like to come learn about the savior's resurrection (laughs) <laughs> this show is so wild with the religion, I tell you. It is crazy. It's, it's, we've never, we've seen nothing like it before. And we, and we won't see anything like it after that. After this, after. Guys, I'm having a hard time. I'm over caffeinated. I've had more, ca- more caffeine today than I've had water. And that's a bad balance. And it's already kind of late. It's 6 p.m. my time as I record this. So I am never going to fall asleep. And I'm just jittery. So sorry, I'm trying my best to make sense here. Monica says that she's connect. Oh God, I did it again. Angie says that she's connected to Monica through their shared trauma with Jen, which I can understand. But the more and more I see of Monica, the more similar to Jen she appears. Like a lot of their friendships with Jen didn't make sense to me, just energy wise. But Monica is very much like Jen to me in a lot of ways. Mary and her son. Ooh, this was weird. This was weird. And like, then I felt bad for Mary. She's like, you snuck and did it. And he, and then she cries. She cries. I'm so uncomfortable seeing Mary cry, but like, I felt her pain. Cause she's like, oh my God, my one and only son lied to me, 
didn't tell me he got married. Such a huge thing. And then she's processing and he's married. Like my son is married and I haven't been able to celebrate it. She doesn't like the girl, right? That's what it was. But Mary says that one, they live in the like separate wings. And one day they were literally running like full speed dressed real nice, which is a wild visual. Like the conversations they've had, like your mom cannot know. Yeah. And they get dressed in their nice attire and sprint out the door. And Mary's like, uh, excuse me. And they just keep it running. And then she lets it go for a year. She lets a full year go by. It's been a year. One solid year. That's wild. That is wild. As a completely different relationship, Heather FaceTimes her daughter, who is in, who's at UC Santa Barbara, I believe, but I know it's in Santa Barbara, the biggest party school of all time, honestly. I'm sure, well, look, I don't know all the other party schools, but it's a party school, no joke. Her daughter's eyelashes are really giving, too. Like, whatever mask, that chick piles that mascara on, and it was reading. I don't know if she's always got that going for her or if she just knew I was about to FaceTime my mom on camera because the lashes are lashing. The mascara is mascara-ing. Heather's so pumped, though. She's like, I'm so grateful that my daughter did do, didn't do a damn thing like me because uh, she said I read my journal from when I was my daughter's age, and it's embarrassing. It's like, I love God so much. I want to dedicate my whole life to God and just serving his people. And I love service and I'm going to be the best human I can be. And I'm going to marry the best righteous man. And she's like, "Uh uh-uh, no, thank you. Not, it's just dogma that I heard. Is dogma the right word? I just put that in my head. What the fuck is dogma? Let me, I need to Google. This is going to be a scattered recap because I got, no, I got, this is the only energy I can come with. Dogma is a principle or set of principles laid down by an authority as incontrovertibly, whoa, incro, incontrovertibly true. I got to look that word up, but okay. I was correct. Dogma is right. Uh, Heather is really tripped out that Lisa wouldn't talk to her about Jack going on a mission, which I kind of get. She's like, this is the one thing I know. Okay. And I also get Lisa being like, no, we're not going to talk to Heather about that because Jack already didn't tell me he's going on a mission. So the last thing I'm about to do is find out why he shouldn't go on a mission and try to pass that along because he will just disown me or never talk to me again or whatever the term is. The rumors and nastiness about her. BravoCon is coming up and I cannot risk a breakout because a couple months ago, my skin was breaking out constantly by my jawline, by my chin. I'm so insecure when my skin is broken out. I feel like everyone's staring at it. But along came Apostrophe, the sponsor of this episode. Apostrophe is an online platform that connects you with an expert dermatology team to get customized acne treatment for your unique skin. Through Apostrophe, you can get access to oral and topical medications that use clinically proven ingredients to help clear acne. You fill out an online consultation about your skin goals and your medical history, and then you snap a few selfies and a dermatology provider will create a customized treatment plan. Apostrophe offers access to prescription treatments for all types of acne, for hormonal acne, to facial acne, and even back, chest, and butt acne. I like that through Apostrophe, you have access to an expert derm team, and they tailor the treatment plan, you know, because not all acne medications work on my skin. I get to, you fill out a whole bunch of questions like, is your skin really sensitive? Yes. My skin will get really dry and flaky. So I can't, it's not a one size fits all for skin, you know? And it's simple to sign up for your first visit. There's no in-person appointment either or a trip to the pharmacy, everything at home. Love that. We have a special deal for our audience. Get your first visit for only $5 at apostrophe.com slash she speaks. When you use our code, she speaks. That's a savings of $15. This code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash she speaks and click get started. Then use our code she speaks to sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. Thank you, Apostrophe, for sponsoring this episode. The rumors and nastiness about her. 
Support for today's episode comes from Jenny Kane, and that is some perfect timing for me because it's fall. I need to update the wardrobe. Jenny Kane is such a California brand. Their clothes are minimalist and effortless and like refined. You know what I mean? You get the luxurious cashmere sweaters, iconic accessories, and then just elevated versions of everyday basics. Not to mention they have the most incredible home essentials too. Jenny Kane is here to help you live your best season yet. And for a limited time, our listeners get 15% off their first order. Go to JennyKane.com and use the code she speaks to get 15% off. I'm so excited it's sweater season because I get to wear the sweater that I've had of Jenny Kane's. And every time I wear it, people are like, where'd you get that? I'm like, oh, it's Jenny Kane. You can just tell the quality is there. The lines are perfect. It's unmatched in any season, but especially this one. The sweaters are where it's at for Jenny Kane. I'm obsessed with the Flynn cashmere sweater. Perfect everyday v-neck. And the cashmere Francis polo is such a cool vintage inspired staple. They're back in new shades too. And you can bet I'm adding both to my cart using my code. Jenny Kane is like known for their super luxe yet lightweight sweaters. And trust us, they do cashmere literally better than anyone. The Cashmere Fisherman and the Cashmere Cocoon are bestsellers in every season, but I'm so excited for fall sweater season because I get to wear them. Everything in their collection is just designed so intentionally. You can style pieces together without like thinking about it. I love to pair a Jenny Kane sweater with everything from classic denim to a simple slip dress for a look that's just like effortless, you know, like, oh, this is just me. I just dress like this. I'm just fabulous. And again, guys, they're home. Home essentials are to die for. Timeless furniture pieces, cozy throws, perfectly curated decor, and the most incredible candles. I keep one in every room. Plus, they have an incredible rewards program where you can earn up to 10% back with every purchase and joining is completely free. Find your forever pieces at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code at checkout. That's a 15% off your first order j-e-n-n-i-k-a-y-n-e dot com promo code she speaks let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about i love that meredith goes over to mary's house um mary has been keeping her distance from this group because they just they haven't grown they haven't grown here's the thing for mary growing means just worshiping her. Don't question her. Don't do any of that stuff. Just worship Mary. And if they're not there yet, they haven't grown. They don't get it yet. (laughs) So she's not wrong if her terminology of grown is to be, you know what I mean? Meredith says that after Lisa's apres ski event, after the apres ski event, I get it. Don't get me wrong. I could have said all kinds of things to Angie, but I didn't. But then Meredith insists that she was not saying the gay rumors. I did not say that. And then she reminds us that she has a gay son and she is an ally. I mean, this this woman is about to go to the GLAAD Awards for crying out loud. So she is an ally. (laughs) They show a flashback, though, because Mary's like, wait, so you're not going to Angie's party? What about the bunny? And I like how Meredith has to piece together like a bunny They show the flashback of the bunny knocking on Mary's car window and Mary rolling it down like, ah, amazing. Meredith is going to be in L.A., she says, for Angie's party, so she couldn't go anyway. But then they show the flashback and it says the night before, like they're at the they're at the Easter party. And then it shows like where Meredith was one day earlier. So I bet technically she could have gone and would have gone had she been invited. Maybe. Maybe she wouldn't have gone if she'd been invited. But if she'd been invited, I'm curious, would she have gone? Just to be like, I never said anything about your marriage. No shock, Mary's not going. No, I'm not going to that Easter bunny hunt. <laughs> like it's an e- like they're hunting Easter bunnies. Like they're hunting bunnies. <laughs> Angie's Greek Easter spread, though, is pretty classy. It's as classy as it could be. It's, it's cute. 
Mary calls Angie, though, to say I'm not going to come. And she says the reason is because she has to go to their Vegas home where there was a flood a year ago. What? Now, you haven't been there this whole time? You know? Mary says, "I, you know, she goes, I kind of feel bad. That's real. <laughs> <laughs> And she says, well, it's good to know you have feelings. <laughs> I love the Greek priest showing up, father or whatever, with the big gold chain and the big gold cross on it. Angie's dad seems very sweet. He was widowed at 44 years old with seven children. Seven. Seven. Oh, my goodness. I bet he needed the Greek community to help him raise the kids. Heather comes in. Heather's a good sport. She comes in saying Christ has risen in Greek and she has a bowl of seven or nine lemons. Nine lemons. I should know that, Shannon Bedore. But of course, all of us were like, oh my gosh, Shannon Bedore. She invented the nine lemons. Sean greets Heather and makes a joke about having a gay boyfriend. And I don't know, that kind of le- leads me to think that it's really not true. Because uh, if you really are hiding that, you just don't talk about it. You're like, mm, I don't know what you're talking. You know what I mean? Feels that gave me a little bit of, oh, okay. I don't. I really don't think it's it's happening. Now, so Monica comes in with her mom. Her mom saying, "I'm LD." Was that is that new to us? Had we only known her as Linda, and now she's like invented. She's like, just call me LD. She's just. I can feel right away. She's just trying to fit in. And so I don't think, I only think we've known her as Linda, because they even put on her title card, LD in quotes, like, okay, AKA LD, apparently. Angie's toast is hysterical. I don't, I doubt she meant it because she would say that's like blasphemous, but she's, she's inspired by Christ's story because he too was, mo- she didn't say he too, but it felt like she was, he too was mocked, ridiculed, and crucified. And he managed to rise up three days later. And I think if Christ can rise above it, then we too shall rise again. (laughs) What? Girl. She's like, I am Jesus. Oh my God, it's so Vicky Gunvalson. So Vicky Gunvalson adjacent. Heather talks to Lisa though at the party about um, what Whitney said about her feeling like upset and triggered that she had had that conversation with Angie and Lisa's like oh yeah I was totally triggered nobody was there for me and Heather's like what the hell we've been laughing we've been smiling and hanging out and Lisa's like yeah we're good as long as there's like we're surface you know and Heather's like I really thought we were closer than that why why would you have thought that because you haven't had a big scene or anything or you get down and dirty or you say really anything about what happened last season and last season was tough. So how, why would you think what's hmm? what Heather? And I'm liking Heather. Don't get me wrong this season. She's, uh, but I'm still like, why would you think you're closer than that? Unless there's some stuff that happened off camera. But last time we saw you guys together, even when um, Heather and Whitney were at ultimate girls trip, things were not great. Whitney's calling Lisa, being like, this is what Heather's doing. And they're like, she's the worst. Oh, my God. You know? So, but anyway, Heather brings up the mission. Like, why why didn't you talk to me about Jack's mission? And Lisa's like, we're not talking about this. You had a different experience. And I just need to be in a space where I'm supporting Jack. And I, I, it's exactly that. I'm like, she can't be talking. This kid... Did not tell her. The friend at the candle making shop knew about this before she did. She's got to she's gotta be like, I love the mission. The mission is the best. I love Mormonism. Right, Jack, please? Meanwhile, Angie pulls Monica aside to tell her how hurt she was, that she was putting out the rumors that she, and then she kind of says that you thought Meredith was speaking about. So now even Angie doesn't quite believe that that's what was happening, that Monica, like, just made some shit up. And I think Lisa led her to think that it wasn't Meredith, it was Monica. Monica is immediately pissed off, immediately. Monica says, but I did say it to you, and I had your back 100%. 
Monica then reminds us that Whitney was the one who asked for Monica to repeat the rumors. And it's true. But I'm out. Okay, now I'm remembering. I am remembering now. I don't even need to go back and watch. Monica said that it was Meredith who told her the rumors. And Whitney's like, what were the rumors? Because Meredith only told me I know things. I didn't hear any specifics. And that's what Monica said. So I'm, that's no wonder we thought it was because Meredith's, no, yeah, Monica, you are being misleading. You're being very misleading. Because now Monica's like, I just am repeating what I heard from Meredith, but now she's like, actually, no, I've heard this for years in the Salt Lake City streets. So, girl, got me all, t- I was, I couldn't, I can't, I can't figure it out. But then back over to Heather and Lisa. Lisa repeats, like, your experience is very different than what what I've had. And Heather's like, I'm talking about you and me, though. Why didn't you read my book? <laughs> Lisa's like, oh, this is about your book now? But I was I was confused by that. But Heather, I guess because she's like, you're a Mormon, you're raising Mormon kids, wouldn't you want to read about my experience? And... Heather's like, she's right, though. She's like, we can't have different Mormonism. Like, there's a reason why your son didn't tell you he was going on a mission, because you're not really doing the Mormon thing. There's a a bunch of other religions that can be a little more casual. Mormonism's not one of them. Mormonism is, like, no joke. And Lisa's like, what are you talking about? I would wear this strapless dress to church. Heather's like, girl, girl. No, you wouldn't. That's... You, you wouldn't be let in the church. Lisa's like, Heather, and this I kind of think is, is correct, but also Heather doesn't deny it. Lisa's like, you don't really know where you are right now because like there are days where I think you're like, I want that back. It's like it's in your core. It's in your DNA. And Heather goes, yeah, that's because like my book is about being an ex-Mormon. It's my heritage, you know? Lisa goes, you wrote the book on being a bad Mormon. I'm trying to raise a good Mormon. Hmm. Why? Why the Mormon thing? What what is it about Mormonism for her? But I think I remember her story from like season one was that her mom was converted when Lisa was like not a baby, but maybe a teen. I I gotta re- I gotta review that, but anyway, back to Angie and Monica. Angie says that she wishes that Monica had just come to her because, you know, I know all sorts of stuff about you that I don't repeat. Monica gets immediately heated. Immediate. Oh, come at me. Come at me. I got I know. I talk about everything. The difference between you and me is I don't hide it. And Angie's like, okay, hold on. Because then now you're implying that I'm hiding, that Sean is having a bunch of gay affairs. But then she goes, everyone here is talking shit behind your back I'm the only one saying it to your face and you hate me for that when you should be hating all the other people okay so I don't think Heather clearly had not been saying Sean was sleeping around with men because Heather was like whoa 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 okay guys we're gonna take this down a notch so that's one thing Whitney claims she hadn't heard it but I really don't think that Whitney was like secretly having the conversation with Monica and then, Mon- and then on camera being like, what are you talking about? Monica would have been like, bitch, you told me. We've talked about it. You know? Lisa's not heard it. Mary's not paying attention. So who's all talking shit about her? Now you're just being cruel, Monica. But here comes Monica's mom. Angie's irritated by it. Angie already realizes it's getting heated, so she's already like about to start taking things down, you know, but then Monica's mom comes over and it's, to be honest, it's, it's odd. It's odd for her to be taking control of the situation when her, she has a grown adult daughter. This is another grown adult woman, Angie. And the words she uses are just very Ramona-y to me. You're both very beautiful, powerful women. Bury the hatchet. You know, Portuguese and Greek are so similar. We're very passionate people. But today's not the day for that. And Angie's like, I'd love to wrap it up with Monica. And Monica says, oh, no, you don't mean wrap it up because you just want to bring it up the next time I see you. So now I'm like, okay, um, you aren't getting the idea that we should stop arguing here, Monica. So never mind. Maybe you do need to be shut down a little bit. Like you aren't 
drop. Even if Angie's faking that, even if she's saying, I do just want to wrap this up, even if you don't believe her, you've already been told we're not going to do that here. It's a, it's the family event. So the kids are right there. So like, let's chill. So Monica says to her mom, don't do this shit to me. You don't have my back. And Linda's like, you are in someone's home. Now, don't get me wrong. Monica's at fault for not checking herself. The issue I have for, on behalf of Monica is in the midst of this, now my mom is like siding with them and adding to what I'm already feeling. And it's like, if, if, she, cause she's clearly got stuff with her mom, like a history there. And it's like, this is kind of my biggest fear. Like here I am filming, I'm having this conversation on camera and then my mom is going to come over and be like, Monica, stop. So it's like she's now lashing out very childishly at everybody because I think that it's like triggering a childhood wound that this chick needs some therapy for, for real. Don't get me wrong, I'm not excusing it. The amount of times they tell her like, chill out, like it gets so bad that, so Monica gets up, Angie's like, we're not going to get anywhere. So Monica gets up and walks across and she's like, don't you dare. Don't. Look, don't do that. And Angie's talking in an absurdly low voice. She's like, I was just coming. I wanted to be kind with you. And I'm like, you weren't that calm. So she had a right to get a little affected. But she actually, she's over, she's, she's overreacting for sure. And it's inappropriate. I'm, I'm not taking that away. But the more Linda comes over, she's like, let's go to the bathroom. Let's go to the bathroom. It just pisses Monica off more. I wish Monica's mom would have gone over with the kids and kept them entertained rather than p pulling more focus to the situation. You know what I mean? You know? Um, let's see. Let's see what I got in my notes here. Angie's talking at a, she's very low baby voice talking. I was just trying to be kind. Monica goes off again and Monica's mom then tries to stop her once more. And then the, tell her to stop. And it's like, oh, you're a kid. You're like a, you're like a teenager right now. You're reverting. You have not dealt with this wound and this is childish. This changes the whole mood, the whole party. Sean is like, okay, we don't do that here in the house, in this home, sorry. So Monica walks off and Linda goes, I'm so sorry about that. And says, can we have some fun? I'm ready for fun. Very Ramona, very Ramona. Like she's just caused an issue and she's like, I just want to dance. I just want to dance. And then she go, and then Angie, she goes, oh yeah, me too. You are fun. The look on Linda's face is wild. Like, she's like, I'm in. This was my goal was to kick my daughter off the show and let me take over. Then Linda sits with the guys. You know, she's like, I'm going to sit here with the guys. Yeah. Do you guys play college ball? Huh? And they're like, lady, we're not interested. Then the dance party starts and they start learning the dance. So Linda goes over to Monica, who's sitting off on the side Again, very Ramona, very Ramona. She's like, oops. She goes, I want to go dance. And Monica's like, go ahead. She goes, no, 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 you're my concern. I'm concerned for you. And she, no, you're not. No, you're not. You were shouting at a family gathering. And she go, Monica's like, does it fucking matter? Yes, it does. It does matter. But Monica has not dealt with any of this. This is, this is the type of like chaos that would come out of Jen. So even if there was like reason for it, the, the triggers and the whatever, it, it's, it's difficult to hear it coming out of your mouth that way. And then Monica says something like, you know what I'm never going to do to my daughters is let them feel the way you make me feel, let them feel alone. And Linda starts to laugh. It was ugly. And Monica's like, you think this is funny? She's like, I do. <laughs> And then she's like, find your own fucking ride home. Production will help her out with that, obviously. And then she grabs all the kids in the middle of dancing and says, let's go. She, the, they're like, okay, never mind, everyone. It's, it's, it's a lot. It is a lot. And then I felt for Monica, though, in her confessional, because she's like, I always feel like little Monica. And I feel bad for her. You know, I wish I had another mom. And that's. Something, if you've been following me a while, you know that I have mom stuff. So I feel for Monica, but this chick should be in therapy because I got mom stuff too. And I'm in therapy because I, 
you know, you need to, you need to work through it. You can't like react this way. You know, she like didn't have any control. And if she worked through it in therapy and had some language for it, she would have handled this like a pro. Uh, because unfortunately now you got Lisa, like her poor mom. And they're like, oh yeah, her mom, she's so great. I'm like, no, 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 we're not. Her mom sucks for that. We had also just seen the scene where her mom was being a jerk uh, at the senior center. So, okay, but the mid-season trailer... Listen, if Meredith is finally leaning into her villain era, give it to me. Because I have said repeatedly that she denies the stuff she does so much that you can't really get to her. But she's a, she's a great villain. She's got the crazy voice. She's villain on every level, like a Disney villain, you know? She's like, it gets to the point where you're accused of something so much that you might as well do it. And then, is that a threat? <laughs> yes. Give it to me. Whitney, though, oh my God. In the <laughs> You exploited my sexuality. It's really, really hard to take Whitney serious. And when Angie does like that mocking of her, like, you exploited my sexuality. It's hard, but I do also want to remind myself and everyone else that um, she was abused in the past, so maybe it's a bigger issue for her now, um, but it's hard. It's hard because it's like you, you, what, like in the, in the first trailer, we got the, the beginning of the season. She's like, you exploited my vagina. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Not funny. Not Emily. Stop it. Stop it right now. Heather, though, I'm loving it that she's going right for Meredith. And I'm like, is anyone else trying to figure out, like, okay, when does Heather get that phone call? Is that related to this? Is it Meredith? Because she's telling her, like, this is a complete betrayal, Meredith. Tonight happened because of what you said to Monica. <gasps> Give me all of this. Give it to me. Meredith, I'm not the one bringing the tornado. Karma comes back. And then they cut to her on an IV drip. So the producers are letting us know. The editors are like, it's going to be, it's Meredith. Because karma comes back. There's your karma. That's what I'm guessing was the messaging there. Ooh. Ooh. It looks good. I'm so ready for villain, villain era Meredith. So fucking ready for it. She could even start dressing like that. Ah, I'm here. I'm here for it. Okay. I am so wired still. I need to go, like, smoke a ton of pot so that I can calm down. I'm going to do my best to edit this to make sense, but I can't promise once I watch it, I'm going to be like, what the hell was I talking about? So good luck to me, and, and, and thank, you for, thank you for listening and watching and all those things. Love you. Mean it. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching and for listening to She Speaks Bravo with Emily Hanks. If you haven't already, would you mind leaving a five-star rating and review on whatever platform you listen? That would be amazing. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you are subscribed and hit that bell so you don't miss an episode. And if you're looking for more content, more exclusive bonus content, check out the Patreon. I post two exclusive episodes a month and I'm covering just the Bravo jams like Classic Roni, Atlanta, and of course Vanderpump Rules. If you just want to support the show, head to buymeacoffee.com slash She Speaks Bravo and buy me a coffee or two or five. We also have merch available at shespeaksbravo.com. And if you're interested in hearing my takes on non-Bravo shows, check out my new podcast, She Speaks It All. I cover the challenge, drag race, and any other show I'm obsessed with that's not Bravo. She Speaks It All is available everywhere you get your podcasts, just like this show. Make sure you're following me on the social medias. I am She Speaks Bravo across all platforms. Thank you so much for any support you give the show, even if it's just listening. Appreciate you. Love you. Mean it. I'll see you soon. <laughs>